Hey, welcome to Strategically Styled. My name is Lisa. I am a school teacher, a woman over 50, and this channel is dedicated to helping you achieve your style goals. And today, this is episode two of a series I am doing called How to Find Your Personal Style. And we are going to be learning how to determine body shape, accurately take measurements of our bodies, and bonus, figure out the bra size that you should be wearing once and for all. So you don't want to miss that. But before we get into that, I will ask if you like this video, I really appreciate it if you click the thumbs up button and like the video. If you click the subscribe button and join our community here and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when new content is uploaded. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, oh, I should also mention, I will link episode one in case you missed it somewhere where you can find it. Disclaimer, this video is not about weight loss, shapewear, procedures, diet, exercise, or anything to do with altering the body you have, but rather it is about understanding the body that you currently have right now, today, and taking that information so that you can make strategic decisions about what to wear to get the effect that you want to have. Whether you're trying to create more balance or whether you want to hyper-emphasize one thing over another. Um, that really is up to you. It's just about data. And I know some women any mention of measuring or weighing or doing anything like that, it just kind of freaks them out. So don't get freaked out. Just just get your data, get your number, get your digits, and let's move on. So having said that, um, you probably want to get a measuring tape. Now you will see in my cutaways, I have a blue one and then it mysteriously vanished. Um, as I was sitting down to do this. So I had to switch out because I have a number of these. You can get one at your $1.25 store, at Walmart, at the supermarket, the drugstore. They're all over the place. And sometimes you'll get yourself a whole sewing kit in the bargain. So what we're going to talk about first is determining your body shape. So I'm going to show you this graphic that I got from a website, I believe it's called freepick.com. I will link it down below, which covers the basic body shapes. Also, just note that you may not be 100% in any one particular category, but this is about figuring out which category your body leans more towards. So over here to begin with, we have the rectangular body shape. And what that means is it doesn't mean you're literally a rectangle, but that there's very little differentiation in the measurements between your shoulders, your waist, and your hips. Next, we have the inverted triangle or strawberry shape. And there, the shoulders are the broadest part of the body. Next, we have the hourglass, meaning the shoulders and hips are close in proportion and the waist is smaller. And then we have the triangle or pear shaped, meaning that the hips are the broadest or widest part of the body. And then finally, we have the oval. And with the oval, the midsection around your tummy is the widest part. So here's the thing about your body shape. What we are going to do to determine your body shape is we are not doing the measurements 360 all the way around. This is about the frontal view of your body. If you looked straight into a full length mirror, what proportions do you have? And also we're only concerned with the shoulder, the waist, and the hips. You don't need to get into the bust and all the other things for this shoulders, waist, and hips. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using a measuring tape, but if you do not have a measuring tape and you are desperate to determine your body shape right now and you don't want to go out and get one, I will just show you in the cutaway. I took this belt from a bathrobe 
and um, I have this metal clip, like a regular hair clip, but you could have maybe a clothespin, a bobby pin, a barrette something, a piece of tape, whatever. Measure it, mark off the distance with whatever you're using, and then you need a ruler to measure the, um, the length so that you can determine the, the, the length. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start with the shoulders and you're going to stand up nice and tall, nice and straight and use your measuring tape or whatever you're using and measure from one part of your shoulder all the way across. And again, just the front, just the frontal view and measure your shoulders. Next, we're going to slide down to the waist and your waist, you want your true waist and your true waist is not necessarily where your belly button is or whatever. If you put your bend over sideways, like so, the part of your body on the side that actually hinges, that is your actual waistline. So that's the area. And again, we want just across the front. What does that measurement? What is that measurement? And then lastly, we want to measure our hips. So what you're going to do is if you slide your hands down the sides of your hips, um, and then you see your hands kind of flare out a little bit. Now, depending on the shape of your body, they may not flare out a lot. It might be, it might be super subtle. And in others, your hands are doing like, you know, a full swoop, but either way, it's okay. And you're going to measure the widest part of your hips. And then that's what you need to find out your body shape. So now you need to determine what is the measurement of each part of your body. And as you will see on mine, uh, my shoulders measure 16 inches. And this is just a frontal view, not the full 360, 16 inches across my waist. It's 14 and a half inches across and my hips at the widest point are 16 and a quarter inch across. So, I'm borderline, I guess, um, of having hourglass, but I feel visually my shoulders just tend to look more broader than my hips. It just is what it is. So that is the process of determining your body shape. So now what are we doing with this information? You're taking this information and you're making decisions about what, if anything, you want to emphasize or de-emphasize. Are you trying to create a balanced view of your body or do you want to hyper-emphasize the fact that your hips are wider or something else? Now, a while ago, I did a very detailed video about how to emphasize or de-emphasize various parts of your body. I will link that as well above, below, all the places so you can find it. So I'm not going to really go over all of that. What I am going to do is talk about me <laughs> and the choices that I make when I choose silhouettes and the cuts of clothing that I wear. So I'm going to show you this dress. And if you follow me on Instagram or on this channel, you already know, I tend to gravitate towards A-line dresses and skirts and by A-line means a little fitted at the top and then they kind of flare out at the bottom. So this is a sundress that I got uh, 15 years ago, maybe at a store in New Jersey that no longer exists, but it was one of those, everything is $10, this is 100% cotton, it's breathable and lovely. And it has a repetitive, a small repetitive pattern that covers it. That is a feature I also look for because I have um, the muffin top, the fupa, the whatever you want to call it. It's my stomach protrudes. And so having this A-line, it kind of skirts out over that so that it doesn't hyper emphasize that part of my body. And the busy pattern kind of just merges and blends things together. So that is a type of clothing that I tend to gravitate towards. Now I will show you this other dress, which is a little more fitted. I got this from Amazon back in April 
and this dress has something of an empire um, waistline, meaning the waist comes up just a little bit higher, and it's not a true empire, but I think you get the um, gist of it, and I heard this French designer, the way he said it was like the Empire waistline, so I love saying Empire, but here in Ohio, Empire. So anyway, you can see that it comes up a little bit higher, and um, this dress also has a belt, which I forgot to put on, but that's okay, because that way you can see how the waistline is actually looking and again it doesn't hyper emphasize the um, my stomach area and it kind of just blends everything out now as it pertains to pants going back to this black outfit that I had on even though it's monochromatic because these pants have a slimmer fit and wearing them with a slimmer fitted top that's just a basic black t-shirt from Amazon essentials it kind of clearly defines my shape so which is nothing wrong with that however when I'm wearing pants that are fitted I really prefer to create more balance by wearing something on top that's a little looser and here I'm wearing the infamous sheer shacket <laughs> so that is um, something I would do to create a little more balance in this outfit and conversely if I'm wearing a more fitted top like the t-shirt I'm going to put it with pants that are looser and I prefer like a wide leg pants and these are not overly flared or dramatic they're just basic pants with a wider leg from Chatwick's of Boston and that is one of the things that I am doing so another thing to consider is the length of your torso so to determine the length of your torso there's two basic methods well there's probably more but I'm going to I'm only going to talk about two so method one is just using your hands and again stand up nice and tall and you put one hand directly underneath your bust fingers together and then you put your second hand directly underneath the first hand if your bottom hand is covering up your belly button then chances are you have a short torso and if it's not then chances are you have a long torso however if you want to be just a little more scientific the other way is to measure the length from the sole of your foot to your crotch area and then from the top of your head to your crotch area and then just compare the two measurements which one is the larger number to determine the size of your torso so in terms of measuring your um, from your foot to your the sole of your foot to your crotch area and if you're doing this by yourself a helpful thing to do might be to put a little piece of tape on the end of your measuring tape and secure it to the floor on a flat surface and then that way you can hold it taut so you can pull the top part of the measuring tape up to measure this would also be useful if for whatever reason you need to measure the length of your legs or your inseam or just your overall height or something like that is that my leg measurement is larger than my torso measurement than the top part of it so that means I have a short torso I and people who have short torsos tend to have longer legs and conversely people who have a long torso tend to have shorter legs but here's the thing you can be tall and have a short torso and you can be shorter and have a longer torso your height doesn't matter it's really about the proportions or perhaps you have a balanced torso meaning from the distance from your head to your crotch and the distance from the sole of your foot to your crotch is essentially about the same you're just maybe a fraction or two off from one to the other so that's that why this matters is because when you try on certain clothes if you look at 
a model in a picture, you will find sometimes that even if the model is the same height as you, that if that person has a shorter or longer torso and than you, and you put the clothes on, is just not going to fit you the exact same way. So that's something else to take into consideration as you are selecting clothes for yourself. Also notice, going back to this other outfit, that um, the pants are lighter and the top is darker, meaning that more emphasis visually is going to be on the bottom half of my body than it is on the top. So this brings me to my OOTD, which I kind of forgot about. It's just sitting here so comfortable. I am wearing this yellow JCPenney shirt. The belt is also from JCPenney's Liz Claiborne. These pants are Chadwick of Boston. I think I mentioned that already. These shoes are Sam Edelman, and this bag is thrifted. And for the record, I'm not going nowhere, but just to give you the look, I put on the shoes and got myself a bag. Oh, and these earrings are thrifted as well. They're like pearl hoops. So anyway, that is, that's the look. And because this is more monochromatic, it's not a match. The top is yellow, the pants are beige, but it kind of um, doesn't really hyper emphasize one part of my body over the other. So that is that. So now let's talk about ordering online. If you need to order things on the internet or anywhere, you do need to do your whole 360 measurements, not just the frontal. So I'm going to just quickly show you. So you're going to measure your shoulders standing nice and still and put the measuring tape all the way around and you're going to go all the way around your back to get your shoulder measurements. Here you do need to get your, well let's go to the waist and then we'll do the bust last. So then the waist, same thing, find your true waist all the way around, 360, get your waist measurements and for your hips all the way around including the derriere and all of it, get your measurements. And depending on what you're ordering, you might also need to know your inseam, the length of your arm and your neck, I don't know, all the things. So now let's talk about the bust area. So just in general to determine your bust area, obviously you're going to just put the measuring tape 360 all the way around. But when you are taking your bust measurements, it would be really helpful if you wear a bra. Even if you're, the reason you're measuring is because you need a bra, get the best one you have, adjust the straps, and get Get them where you aspire them to be, and then that way you can get an accurate measurement of what you're trying to get for, for your bra. Measurements to determine your bra size. First, you need to know the band size. And to do that, you're going to take your measuring tape and snugly put it around the base of your bust right underneath and figure out that measurement that is your band size. If it is not a whole number, you are going to round up or down to the nearest whole number. So for example, if your band size was 34 and a quarter, you're going to round, round down just to 34, whereas if it was 34 and three quarters, round up to 35, if you understand. Okay. So anyway, and I know it's hard to find bra size bands in odd numbers. They are out there, but in that case, you might want to go with the 34 and just plan on using the hooks that are furthest away. You know how they have the three different adjustable levels. So there's that. So anyway, you need to know your band size. And, and now in order to find your cup size, here's what you got to do. Measure the fullest part of your bust all the way around and then you're going to do the same thing round up or round down to the nearest whole number whatever is nearest um, to where you are and then all you do is subtract the two and the difference between those that determines your cup size so for every inch is a cup size so if you 
your band size was 32 and your bus size was 33, that would be a one inch difference. That means you're an A cup. And then if it was two inches, you're a B cup. If it's three inches, you're a C cup and so on and so forth all the way up the scale. So once you have that information, then you can accurately find bras that will fit you and fit you comfortably and do the job <laughs> that needs to be done. If you are having some issues with your bra specifically, like if you have side boob or under boob, like just the this, this spillage here, then chances are what you need to do is decrease the band size. That means, so if you are buying a bra size 34B, then that means you might need to go down to um, a 32 just to keep the band in position so that things aren't spilling under out the bottom or off the side. And in addition, you may need to move up a cup size. So go and decrease the band size, increase the cup size. So if you are, let's just go back to the beginning here, you have side boob spillage um, and you are buying a 34B. That means you might need a 32C and that might be a better fit for you. And don't get caught up in numbers and like, oh, well, I want to be this size. What You should want to be the size that's going to fit <laughs> your boobs and keep everything as it should be. So that is that. And yeah, so I don't want to prolong this too much further, but this is how you can determine your body shape and your measurements so that you can find clothes that fit your wonderful body. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching. And I hope your day is blessed and stylish.